Okay, since this is a short week, I will only see you really Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. You won't have math on Thursday. We are reviewing fraction operations because in sixth grade, they kind of already expect us to know this, which we've been practicing the most of the year. I just want to make sure we all have it. Um, but there's a lot of fraction, multiplication, and division word problems. So that's what we're going to spend time on is just word problems. Um, but before we can solve word problems, we've got to make sure we can solve just the math problems. Can I put the other stuff you can put your other stuff aside, yep. OK, so this is one piece of paper where you have all of the fraction rules in one spot. Why do you think I made it purple? So it's obvious. So it stands out, and you can find it easily. We're going to do one example of each kind just to refresh your memory. OK, thank you. So pull out this purple piece of paper. And again, I put all of the rules up at the top so that if you need them, you have something to look back at. How is adding and subtracting different from multiplying and dividing? Who can tell me one way they are different? Dane. You have to get a common denominator. Before you can add or subtract, you have to make them comparable. Um, all fractions, the last step is the same. Anytime you're working with fractions, what's your last step? Simplify. Simplify. OK? So let's go ahead and just jump into the examples, because again, this is a review. 5 eighths plus 4 fifths. I'm going to throw a new word at you that shouldn't be super new, but I just don't use it a lot. When you're finding a common denominator, you're finding the least common multiple. What does that mean? Least common multiple. What does that mean if something's the least? Not Bigger. The smallest. What does common mean? Jack? They share it. What's a multiple? Yeah, so this is what is the smallest number that they both go into? Least common multiple. The smallest number that they both go into. What's the smallest number that 8 and 5 both go into? Jude? Uh, 40. 40. Multiplying them together will always give you a common multiple. So that always works when you're doing this. But if you find the smallest or the least common multiple, it'll make your end easier because you won't have anything to reduce or as often. So 8 and 5 both go into 40, so we're going to show that we want them both to be over 40. Nate, how do I turn an 8 into a 40? Times 5. If I multiply the denominator by 5, what do I have to do to the numerator? Yep, you have to do the same. Create an equivalent fraction, so 25 fortieths plus on the other side, Stella, what are we doing? Uh, How'd we turn a 5 into a 40? Times so times 8 times 8. 4 times 8 is 32. Once my denominators are the same, Ethan, what do we do? Do you have a pencil? Add what? And that would give us 57 fortieths. Go get in that cabinet on the, the far right one. Is that a good final answer? Nope. What's wrong with it, Jack? OK, it's an improper fraction. So how do I make it a mixed number? Open it. Open the other side. There's a box down by your left hand that's open. Right there. Sorry. One and seventeen fortieths. We divide it out. Seventeen over forty can't be simplified, so we are finished. On the bottom, Livy, what do we have to do first? Okay. What do nine and five both go into? Forty five. Reese, how do we get there? Yep, so 
So we did times 5 on the 9, so we had to do it on top. So that's 40. Okay, what about on the other side? Yep, so times 9. I suggest you show it because a common error is that you'll multiply 3 times 5 because that's what you did on the other side. 27 minus 40. If you have to go out to the side and do scratch work, go out to the side and do scratch work. This is 13. Why do you think a common wrong answer is 67 40 fifths? And then they flip it to a mixed number, Ethan, because they add it. Why is subtraction, subtraction usually quicker? Jude? Yeah, you typically don't have to make it into a mixed number. Okay, so 13 over 45, and we are finished. Um, I asked at the beginning how adding and subtracting is different than multiplying and dividing. One is they have to have a common denominator. Another way is you can add and subtract mixed numbers. Okay, we cannot multiply and divide mixed numbers. We have to change them to improper fractions. So on these ones, we're going to leave them as mixed numbers. I suggest setting them up in a vertical format, which just means up and down, instead of a horizontal, a side-to-side -side format. But since we are adding, we still need a what? Common denominator. This is one where if we just multiply them together, we get a common denominator, but not the least common multiple. What is the least common multiple of 6 and 4? Chase? 12. Okay. Nate, are you with me? Yeah. Okay, you don't even have the problem written down yet, so you're not with me. There we go. Okay, so 12 works. 24 works, it just we would have to simplify more at the end. So I have 4 and something over 12 plus 3 and something over 12. Max, how did I turn a 6 into a 12? Times 2. Times 2, so I'm going to show it there and here. So that'd be 10. On bottom, Stella, how would I turn a 4 into a 12? Times 3 times 3. Times three. Mm -hmm. Now that I have a common denominator, Dane, what do I do? Add the fractions. So I add the, all of the fractions? Or what part of the fraction can I add? add the, numerator. the numerator. So I have 19 twelfths. I can add my whole numbers. 7 and 19 twelfths. Ethan, what's weird about that? It's not finished. Yeah, it's not simplified. So Ethan, 19 twelfths is equivalent to what? No, just the 19 twelfths. Change it to a mixed number. Okay, 1 and 7 twelfths. And then that 7 just adds on. So what's 7 plus 1? Eight, so we have 8 and 7, 12. So if you have a whole number times a mixed number, you just add the whole numbers and the fraction kind of sticks behind it. Okay? Yeah. Can you simplify that? 7 twelfths? No. Oh, it's not. Yeah, never mind. Okay. We can simplify 19 twelfths to 1 and 7 twelfths, and then we add on the 7. Um, for the subtraction example, I gave you the hardest subtraction example I could um, give you where you have to find a common denominator and then we will also have to regroup on this one. Does everybody have the adding before I get rid of it? Same thing, I suggest we set them up in a, a vertical format, so up and down. So 17 and 1 half minus 11 and 2 thirds. First thing you always do is get a common denominator. Jalen, what's a common denominator for 2 and 3? 6. So we have 17 and something over 6 minus 11 and something over 6. Nate, help me get out my numerators. What do we do to the 17 and a half? We're turning a 2 into a 6. What do we have to do? Six. Times 3 times 
times three, so that'd be 17 and three six. On bottom, Sophia, what are we doing? Times two. Okay, times two times two. Sadie, what tells me that I'm gonna have to regroup here? Yeah, and pretty soon we're gonna get to negative numbers, hopefully within the next 12 days, because then we have IAR testing. Um, but how do I know that this answer cannot be negative? Because if I took three minus four, that's negative one. But how do I know I, can, I should not have a negative answer in this problem, Dane? Yeah, because the whole number, 17 minus 11, isn't negative. What's the answer? It's ELA, so I don't know. <laughs> OK, so that tells us we have to regroup. So we borrow one whole. How do I regroup one whole in these problems? Jack? You add six to the numerator. Let's be proper, because we don't just add six to the numerator. What is our actual why? Because, six over six because our, we add six sixths, because we have to add one whole. Why are we adding six sixths, Jack? Okay, so every time I regroup, will I have to add six six? No, because the denominator The denominator would tell me what we're adding. So if your common denominator is 12, what will your new whole be? 12, 12. So what if your common denominator is 15? 15, 15. So you just regroup one whole, but to add them, you have to have a common denominator. From here, you can just circle that and say that's 9. Now we can do the math. What's 9 minus 4? 5. Denominator still 6. 16 minus 11 is 5. It's ugly. So 5 and 5, 6. Okay. Flip it to the back. So differences between adding and subtracting, multiplying, dividing. Adding and subtracting, you must have a common denominator, and you can work with mixed numbers. For multiplying and dividing, it's easier because you don't need a common denominator. It's harder because you can't work with mixed numbers. You have to convert them to improper. Okay, and again, all the rules are there. I do want to point out number two. Cross reduce if possible, and that's diagonally. You can only do this to multiplication problems. Once people learn cross reducing, you guys kind of go cross reducing crazy because it makes the problem shorter and easier to work with. But you can only do it if you have a multiplication of fractions problem. So down here at the bottom are examples. 14 fifteenths times 6 sevenths. What can we do? Wait, um, the, if you're dividing, once you get it to the multiplication, shouldn't you cross reduce? Once it's a multiplication problem, yes. And we're going to talk about that on one of them. Sadie? So, you do 14 and so yeah, diagonally here, I could reduce both of these by 7. I'm going to show it right here. Is there anything else I could cross reduce? Harper? Divide the other diagonal by 3. OK, so now let's clean it up. 2 fifths times 2 over 1. Did that simplify the problem a lot? Yeah. Yes, if we wouldn't have crossed reduced, we would have had to reduce by 21 at the end. OK, now we multiply straight across. 2 times 2 is 4. 5 times 1 is 5. Can 4 fifths be reduced? No. no. Made it a lot easier. Next one, can we multiply a fraction by a whole number? No, no we must have a fraction times a fraction. fraction. Nate, how do I turn 48 into a fraction? Shh. Put it over 1. So I have 5 eighths times 48 over 1. Now that I have a fraction multiplication problem, what should I look for, Haley? Cross-reducing, cross is there anything I can cross-reduce? Yeah, I can 48 and 8. I can reduce them both by 8. So I have 5 over 1 
times 6 over 1. What's 5 times 6? 31 times 1. So my answer is just 30. So multiplying is easier than adding and subtracting because you do not have a common denominator. You don't have to have a common denominator. But when you get to mixed numbers, it gets a little bit harder because can we multiply mixed numbers? No, you must have a fraction times a fraction. Naomi, how do I turn 6 and 2 thirds into just a fraction? You do 6 times 3 and then add 2. Yeah, so 3 times 6 plus 2 is 20. What's my denominator? 3. three. Times what's 5 times 4 plus 4? 5 times 4 plus 4. 24 fifths. Now that I have a multiplication of fractions problem, Max, what should we look for? After I have a multiplication of fraction problem, what should I stop, stop and look for? Can we cross reduce here? Um, this way, what can we reduce by? Five. What about the other diagonal, Stella? So that would be 4 over 1 times 8 over 1, which is 32 over 1, which is 32. So instead of having to take 20 times 24 and getting 480 over 15 and then having to do long division, is that easier? Much easier. Now, can you cross reduce every single time? No, I just made sure I gave you problems that it would make it a lot easier if you cross reduce. Sometimes you might have to do some algorithm to get an answer and then do long division. Okay, who remembers my rule for dividing fractions? Harper. That's the trick. What's the rule, Bryce? Multiply by the reciprocal is the rule. The trick is KFC. Shh. What is a reciprocal? What is a reciprocal? Nolan? Like if you have one half and you take like two Yeah, so one half, you flip the fraction. That's what it is. It's a fraction flip. So one half would be two over one. What's the reciprocal of three? One third. One third. You have to make it a fraction first. There we go. So who can tell me what will the next step of this problem look like when we keep the first, flip the second, change the sign to multiplication? Harper? Chase, now that I have a multiplying fractions problem, what can I do? Reduce. I can reduce. I couldn't reduce as when it's division. You have to have a multiplication problem. So we divide by 9, divide by 9. So that would be 5 over 1 times 2 sevenths. What's 5 times 2? 10. 7 times 1? 1 and 3 sevenths. Good job. This is done. You should focus on me instead of Nate. Last one. Jude, what do I have to do first? Get the um, mixed numbers. Yes, I must have fraction divided by a fraction before I can multiply by the reciprocal. So change it to a mixed number or improper fraction would be 11 fifths divided by, don't flip anything yet, 5 thirds. Common error is people want to cancel those fives. Why can we not cancel those fives, Bryce? Because it's not a multiplication problem. That only works on multiplying. What will my next step look like? Jude? What will my next step look like? Read me what my problem will be. That's not, a, what will my prop, read me what my problem will say. KFC is not the answer. What will my next step look like? Put 
Okay, keep the first one. It's staying the same, 11 okay, fifths. We flip the second one and then change the sign to multiplication. Now I can look for what? Cross reducing. Can I cross reduce? No. Nope. Multiply straight across. 33 over 25. Sophie, is that the best final answer? No. Nope. It's improper. Because we had to flip it. Keep the first, flip the second, change to multiplication. Okay, let me pause this. <laughs>